This is the Fixer Punk Podcast. I'm Grayson Peltier. And I ain't going to WrestleMania. All of my planning did stall. But if I had a million dollars, then I, I could have a ball. If I could go to WrestleCon and beat the Young Bucks and see Super Card of Honor at my alma mater. I apologize for subjecting you to that. If you have any complaints, concerns, or maybe a compliment, please give us a call at 844-477-PUNK. That's 844-477-7865. And I will await that, and it may be as furious as all the comments of the people talking about CM Punk and the rumor mill that's going around. CM Punk apparently had a workout with his former colleagues, um, Dax and Cash of FTR. They posted a picture of themselves at the gym today. Um, And CM Punk fired off a text message stating that he missed the fans. Um, And this was during Dax and Cash FTR's um, live show at WrestleCon saying they missed the fans and wish that he was there having ice cream with them, which, honestly, ice cream is actually... I know it's John. That's also a John Moxley thing, uh, ice cream. He, he had a weird ice cream story about how he says he always has a scoop of ice cream at night, I guess, when, when he's, like, bulking up. Uh, but um, some of the uh, more... I actually bought these um, ice cream bars. They're, like, really Greek yogurt bars. Uh, pretty good post-workout snack to be honest um but that's beside the point um so cm punk which if you've been following this podcast for a while you know that the fixer punk position has been very clearly that cm punk is more like and has acted more like cm poser Um, He's acted a lot like the people that I've seen in the skateboarding and punk rock scenes that sold out for money, that sold out to even conservative political ideologies, people who were coming up with these wild ideas around mental health um, and taking advantage of people. The attitude, I'm not saying CM Punk, and I have never said that CM Punk does these kinds of things, but what I'm saying is that the attitude to me, it gave off that same terrible vibe of those people in the skateboarding and punk rock scenes who did a bunch of terrible things, sold out, didn't believe in the scene's values, and didn't believe in a progressive, leftist, decentralized conceptualization, not the... um, more left authoritarian kind of conceptualization or even the conventional democratic conceptualization, but the specific left libertarian idea that punk rock and skateboarding really made famous out there. Um, And it seems like obviously CM Punk did some things that were very, very actually blatantly illegal. If true, if true, he, uh, that he assaulted, um, they, they assaulted Ken, that, that he assaulted, um, Matt Jackson, and the young bucks. I think one of the brothers, damn, it's getting late tonight. I, maybe I shouldn't do these double header podcasts. Um, but the fact that, that he was involved in an assault and an altercation at brawl out, um, obviously that was the, that was, that was the final straw. And I had actually written articles praising CM Punk in the past. And I thought that when he came into AEW, things were going to be good. But he started to impose his will a little bit too much, started to cry out for wanting the old WWE way a little bit more, um, and not liking the alternative social movement kind of crew structure, the way the Young Bucks structured AEW is closer to like a skate crew 
type structure than anything in conventional sports or in the history of professional wrestling. I've documented this quite a bit um, in my Beyond the Gripe Bomb article on ProWrestlingMusings.com. I actually created a whole report talking about how this is a unique form of creative enterprise that very, very closely tracks to skateboarding culture, surfing culture, punk rock culture, tracks a lot closer to that than anything in historically in pro wrestling. And obviously CM Punk is an experienced pro wrestler, has said that he is an old school guy. So it didn't really, he wasn't very compatible with the Young Bucks who were executive vice presidents. Of course, he also trashed um, Hangman Adam Page, who he won his world championship off of only to get injured um, just a few days later. Um, actually, when I was in the arena in LA at the forum. Um, and I have some very strong emotions about that. But what I do want to say tonight, this is going to be very interesting for me to say, but it reflects um, sort of my underlying thought process this entire time around. It seems like, including from like some of the reports from Fightful and some of the other wrestling media, that CM Punk expresses some sort of regret. He's offered to possibly apologize for some of the things he said. And he's saying that he's missing the fans. Now, a lot of people are saying that his statements are manipulation. And that could certainly be the case. I am not going to I, I am not going to say for certain how it is, but I feel like there are some indications that he's coming around, and I believe that CM Punk is an individual with a lot of very, very great potential. I think I even saw him posting about a Bernie Sanders rally. Uh, about a week ago, which is a very positive development. I honestly feel like CM Punk, if things could have worked well for him in AEW, then things could have really, really gone great. If he would have done well in MMA, I could have seen him, even in MMA commentary, I could have seen CM Punk rising up and becoming the next um, progressive alternative to Joe Rogan. I could see, um, I could see CM Punk being a positive influence for good but obviously if he's going to behave the way he did violently um not supporting the new models um and the creative autonomy really not even just not supporting the the new models of pro wrestling maybe if he doesn't like a particular style then you don't like that style but asserting himself a little bit too much, aggressively wanting to take the place of the move, of the leaders of the movement that have already in place and have already succeeded and trying to supplant them and trying to move to a model that's closer to like the big business type model, very corporate type model. I talk a lot about this whole concept of like skateboarders and punk rock people just pandering to capitalism and pandering to – their their hustle culture people um there's actually a really funny tweet by a guy um colonel k speaks on twitter has nothing to do absolutely nothing to do with this but he was like we should have more people starting hardcore bands and fewer um hustle culture and grind culture on things he actually said in a really articulate way um Oh yeah, he actually um, he said less grind set mindset podcasts, more hardcore bands, and then um, a skate shop, kinetic skate shop, commented less grind set, more grind core, and it's pretty good sentiment right there, um, because and and cousin P, um, actually he was a like, cousin P, but also Colonel K speaks on Twitter. I guess I'll link it in the in the show description. Um, but he says here, memo to the angry young men out there, less grind set, more grind core. Um, because, yeah, you've seen a lot of these people in the hardcore punk rock scenes going into those kinds of ideas um, and, and kind of selling out and just really – and making it part of their identity to just believe in capitalism so heavily and believe in the system and the way things are done, even if they hold relatively progressive values – they do not believe in the legitimacy of the ideas of the culture from which they came. They believe I'm beyond that. I'm past that. I'm past the anarchism. I'm past the self-organizing crew model. Let's just follow the corporate model. And a lot of times it's because there isn't strong intellectual or academic support that is easily accessible out there. 
Um, during my time at USC, I actually studied um, in one of the first classes about skateboarding and action sports, business, media, and culture under um, Dr. Neftali Williams, um, who held a role in the State Department in relation to sports diplomacy. And that was one of the first legitimizations of the ideas of authentic skateboarding culture as having a positive social impact all the way to the point where the State Department was looking at these autonomous collective forms of operation of skateboarding culture um, and its positive social impacts. Um, so they'll believe that these things are just not legitimate and they can just throw them in the trash and then just follow the conventional model because they have succeeded. So the CM and CM Punk was basically now standing for a conventional model. Um, and obviously that concerned me a lot, given that I went through a whole bunch of battles and ridiculous things with people who were just acquiescing to um, more mainstream forces, and especially some of these um, church-based mental health programs that were getting way, way too much influence into things that they weren't supposed to have influence in in the skateboarding world. And seeing CM Punk's behavior, I was like, this feels like that. I know that if I were to talk to him and tell him my story, I knew, and I knew because right after that day at AEW Dynamite where he got injured, um, I saw him. I I pretty much met him. I was in an anxious millennial cowboy shirt. There was some animosity between him and Adam Page. I did not go up to him because I felt a little bit embarrassed, me wearing an Adam Page shirt and then him being there, but he was very nice, very affable, very kind. So there is a very, very positive person there, and we can start to see a little bit of that coming out. Of course, a little bit of the, I guess you could say, neuroticism in, in a lot of CM Punk's Instagram posts as of late. Um, but I can see that positive light shining through him. But he's not going to be compatible, excuse me, with the style of the AEW movement. He has made that abundantly clear. The Young Bucks assaulted them. Or he assaulted the Young Bucks. Damn, I, I'm messing up words again. But yeah, he assaulted them. Allegedly, again, allegedly. He called Adam Page an empty-headed dumbass. Adam Page, who was one, effectively one of the founders of AEW, one of the vanguards of the AEW movement. And in fact, I view him as the protagonist of AEW. And and the primary ambassador of its alternative cultural leadership form. Um, there are some serious allegations they made against AEW management in terms of making C I mean, CM Punk made these allegations that he was, um, that they tried to talk him into working while he was not medically cleared, um, having him wrestle a match while he's not medically cleared. Those are serious allegations. I don't know the veracity of them, but if they're true, that is a major problem. That should never happen. Um, I have my doubts given how they handled Adam Cole and Adam Cole's return and seeing from AEW All Access. But it's concerning that if they were trying to get him to wrestle a match way too soon um, when it was not medically advisable for him to do so, then of course that is a massive issue that AEW needs to deal with. And I think that having better authentic cultural leadership and le good leadership package, packages practices, like I explained in the um, Beyond the Gripe Bomb, um, Power and Leadership in Alternative Cultures article that will be linked in the description of this episode, it can help with some of that. Um, but in terms of CM Punk, there's a lot I like about him. There are a lot of things I relate to him with. His story around his head injury and the in WWE, his, his um, sort of his attitude, I can tell that like even sometimes like the kind of like dark side of me acts a little bit like CM Punk. I have an interesting revelation, and yes, I am in therapy. Um, but yeah, there's a lot that I can relate to with him. I um, he was the first pro wrestler that I even had like a sort of a vague liking toward when I wasn't even really watching wrestling. I was like, I, I, I knew CM Punk and I, and I thought he was a good guy and I, I liked him. Um, 
but obviously the first pro wrestler that I really fell in love with was Hangman Adam Page. And still, I am still 100% Team Hangman Adam Page for President 2028. Let's get that going. Let's spread the cowboy stuff across the U.S. Um, and maybe we can save ourselves from either having uh, Trump, DeSantis, whoever is in 2028. Um, or if we need to um, have a refreshing after Joe Biden, people are going to want uh, after eight years of Joe Biden, maybe people are going to want some. Uh, if they want to keep, have a Democrat still in place, they're going to need something a little different. They're going to need some cowboy stuff to get a third Democratic term in there. And hangman Adam Page can deliver on that. But that's beside the point. But CM Punk, what CM Punk can definitely deliver on is is uh, is having that um, experience and having that punk rock background if it's really authentic, which I think it, it might be. Um, and also, there is something to be said about his MMA background as well. I think that that also brings a very positive light to um, it's it's an extra distinctive that I think could help him um, as if he decides to pursue the athlete activist route. Um, and he has very positive fan sentiment amongst a certain subset of fans. But the problem is, the challenge, the difficulty is that he does not work with well with the AEW movement. He's been described as a locker room cancer. He's had He had issues in WWE as well. And that is why I really think the big mess up with CM Punk was putting him into the world championship picture because that put him as the primary centerpiece of AEW and he was already the primary centerpiece of AEW while Hangman Adam Page was supposed to have his triumphant reign as the leader of the AEW movement as world champion in early 2022. That was the biggest mistake. Had he been in, say, TNT title contention had the trios division opened up um you could have still gotten that recognition had i think that had he been given the rock treatment or the john cena treatment um that would have done well special attraction if we want to if we want to stick to the skateboarding punk rock model um which i think this is one of the best examples out there a guy named jeff grosso he sadly passed away a few years ago, um, but Jeff Grosso um, was kind of the angry old guy who also really cared and also really had a love for skateboarding. He did this video series called L Love Letters to Skateboarding, but he also had these rant and rave episodes where he ranted about certain things that were wrong in skateboarding culture, but in a very fun, very playful way. And with a respect for the autonomy and the alternative nature of the culture. Um, Grosso, even though he didn't necessarily like skate diplomacy, the stuff that people like myself and Neftali Williams really advocated for, Jeff Grosso um, would he, he, he would also um, rail against the whole idea of having skate coaches and, tell, and telling people basically that, that skateboarding is their thing, that they shouldn't allow people to control what skateboarding meant to them. Um, that and that they, they you didn't need these authority figures teaching you to skate um, or making you into a skateboarder in their image. So he was very much in favor of the autonomy of the alter of the alternative culture of of skateboarding, um, and that's the model AEW is going along. And if we could have had a CM Punk run with. Maybe some BTE segments, which the, one of the ways I knew CM Punk's run was not going the way it should is because he wasn't on BTE. BTE, being the elite, was really the driving force of the AEW culture. When he wasn't in it, I was like, okay, that's a little interesting, yet he's now like the main character of the show suddenly. Um, maybe Love Letters to Pro Wrestling. With, with CM Punk, um, paying tribute to the older styles that he that he loves and he appreciates. That could have worked well, but we're, we're kind of past that now. So where does that leave us? We have fan demand here. Um, we have him 
wanting to rehabilitate himself. And I believe that he can potentially rehabilitate himself um, to an extent. Um, I, I do believe in second chances. I believe in the AEW movement. I believe in keeping it the way it is. And I believe that right now, where it is right now with excellent feuds between the Blackpool Combat Club and the Elite, um, the storytelling that's going around with Adam Cole's return, it's at its best. We don't need to insert another X factor, another variable into that. Um, We don't need anything to screw that up. We don't need a bunch of bad blood. We don't need all of the mess of that and the young bucks have clearly said they want to move on it was bad for their mental health and we cannot we cannot lose the young bucks they started this movement they paved the ra- they paved the way and they paved that road in gold so that all the all the men and women young and old can get paid along the way as the elite anthem says so where does that leave us i'm going to kind of in my mind earlier today, as I was thinking about this, getting criticized from for my anti CM Punk positions, I decided to step into the role of a mediator and think, okay, if we are mediating this dispute, what does each side want, and what can we give them? CM Punk wants a return. He wants to be in front of fans. Um, he wants to share ice cream bars with them. Um, and. AEW wants to keep a good thing going. The Young Bucks want to keep a good thing going. They want to keep doing their stuff. They want to carry on. That's their message. They want to carry on. Um, and they have closure. And they want closure. And there's a contract involved. And there's a possibility that money's going to need to be paid out. And there are some resources that obviously would then be taken out because you have money and stuff like that. And you have fan sentiment you have fans that, that want CM Punk's return. You have many fans who really don't want it, that want to keep it away from them, that want to keep it off their TV, that want to not have what CM Punk was offering, which was clearly throwing a wrench into the AEW model. So how do we satisfy all of those demands? So keeping that the AEW movement going, keeping it carrying on the way it is, and not having all the intervention of CM Punk and having all of the newcomers take over the message like they did like they did with Punk and Danielson and all of that um, during Hangman's title run. We don't want another thing like that intervening into, say, what's going on with the Elite versus Black Bull Combat Club now because they've solidified Danielson and... And those guys have, have they've gotten into the fabric of it. They've gotten into storylines. John Moxley has done an excellent job. He has really been the person who's holding up the whole movement this whole time. But so, but then we also have, we also have, we, we, we have a way of escape. There are a couple ways of escape here. There are a couple ways to give everybody what they want. One of them is not going to be um, very amenable necessarily to Tony Khan because supposedly they want non-compete which would be, and I think this would be amazing for CM Punk, and I think it would be probably amazing for the wrestling community, is CM Punk going to WWE. It's WrestleMania weekend. Who knows? Maybe he'll debut at WrestleMania. And that would be an amazing moment. That would be great for him. Puts him back into a system that he can work with. Maybe he didn't have the best time in WWE. Maybe he had a conflict with people. Maybe he had some issues. But if you if WWE implements the mitigation strategies that AEW failed to implement, which is basically the John Cena slash Rock treatment, um, it could work. Give him one last good run. Um, the other option is to have him be part of Ring of Honor. Also happening um, tomorrow, today, depending on when this episode comes out. Um, uh, I don't think it's going to happen, but possibly having him rejoin Ring of Honor. There's some history to it in the Pipe Bomb promo. Punk did say, maybe I'll go back to Ring of Honor. Obviously, the conflict there is there's Colt Cabana. He's in there. Colt Cabana was really the person and the emotional trauma that caused 
um, CM Punk to become very, very upset. And that that the reopening of those wounds caused CM Punk to, as Adam Page says, go against workers' rights in the AEW locker room because of that personal rub. So you need to get Cole Cabana out of there. But look, Dark Order is trying to rebuild itself. Cole Cabana was part of Dark Order. The Dark Order door is open. You can go right in. Go right back in. CM Punk come right back into the Ring of Honor door. And that's a Tony Khan thing. It needs a push. It needs a boost. It needs that first dance type moment. And then you keep you keep the brands. It is a very, very separate, highly separated, insulated brand. He can maybe come on AEW TV every once in a while, but he can be there and do a service to that model. And Ring of Honor is not necessarily, it's, it is a conventional wrestling product. It is not an elite model wrestling product that, that utilizes the elite mode of storytelling through BTE. It is not bound to the alternative culture and to the AEW model. And the Ring of Honor model is one that CM Punk is familiar with and very fond of. So that could work well. I feel like the WWE return would be like best for the wrestling fans, but in terms of mediating the conflict and the dispute and giving CM Punk a place to do a final run, giving him that personal satisfaction, making Tony Khan happy on a financial level, because all the fans keep saying, well, this is going to make so much money. This is going to make so much money. CMFTR going to make a ton of money. Um, CM, CM Punk versus Kenny Omega makes tons of money. That's not going to happen. But he can make money for Tony Khan in another way. And this might be the answer to our problems. Um, so this was a episode that started out talking about WrestleMania. And we really haven't talked about WrestleMania. And that's because I, I honestly have not kept up with the WWE product as much as I really should have. But... Out of the matches, I am just going to mention that the ones that I care about out of all of these are going to be um, the Usos versus Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Um, I'm a mark for Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn's music, the World's Apart music, that is fire for a skate video part too. I hope that maybe there's a skateboarding partnership out there some, somehow, some way. Some pro skaters able to use Worlds Apart as a as music for their video part. That would be amazing. I would love to see Worlds Apart used in skateboarding in some way. Maybe Sami Zayn playable in Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I don't know. Um, but I love him. I love Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens probably the most like real, authentic guy in WWE, which is a very highly produced, highly regimented, highly scripted product. But Kevin Owens still manages to be authentic and bring it. Um, care a little bit about Rey Mysterio versus Dominic Mysterio. Kind of relatable to me as a as a Latino with a family. Sometimes has some conflicts and stuff like that. Nothing major. But I kind of relate to the Mysterio storyline there a little bit. Um, and of course adrenaline in my soul it's cody rhodes versus roman reigns let's see what happens there i was hoping after elimination chamber i was actually hoping during that that maybe by some miracle could have gotten Sami Zayn as champion but didn't happen but i feel like maybe this maybe this is how wwe elevates their tag division i don't know Obviously, they're not really as much into tag as AEW is, but it could be a good, if if they prevail over the Usos, it could be a great tag run for with two very authentic people in Owens um, and, and Zayn. Um, I'm getting tired here. This is probably the most I've recorded in a rather long time so thank you for if you listen to both episodes if you just listen to this episode um but please 
Go follow social media at Grayson Nation on Twitter with most of the wrestling updates. Also at FixerPunk on TikTok and Instagram. Email Grayson at OffSpeedSolutions.com. Um, if you are running some sort of social movement and you need analysis, communication support, more expertise into the business of changing the world, check out OffSpeedSolutions.com. Um, and if you want to call in, you want to roast me on something, you want to ask a question, you want to be nice, you want to leave a compliment, 844-477-PUNK, 844-477-7865. All right. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. Enjoy your WrestleMania weekend. <laughs>